All right, welcome to Profiles and Drive, the place where I invite amazing people such as Desmond over here to come share the story of how they got to be where they are, the deepest struggle, how they discovered this is what they're meant to be. Because I believe a lot of times we look at people that we view as successful and we never really get to see the story of what it took to get there. We view, some of us, I know I used to do it, view them as like, that's good for them, but I'll never become that. And it just becomes another excuse to not do anything. And that's one of the reasons that I invited Des to come share his story. He's a good friend of mine. He's, uh, he's actually been training me in basketball and I've been actually helping him get his workouts on before he heads off and becomes an international professional basketball player. So uh, yeah, uh, enough talking to my end, Des. All right, first off, thanks everyone for having me. Uh, my name is Desmond Beristain. I'm a collegiate basketball player and I'm you know, aspiring to go professionally. Um, the twist is that I'll be going professionally outside of the U.S. Internationally in either the Philippines or Southeast Asia or even in Mexico. So, um, you know, I might not look like the typical Filipino, Mexican, <laughs> yeah. you know, mix, yeah. but um, that's what I am and, uh, you know, thanks for being here. Yeah, uh, I met him uh, when I was originally going to, because we were starting up our fit club and I was lo looking for electrical outlets at the park and then I see him, like, is like, just no, like at a time when no one else is at the park and I, I see you like dribbling between the legs and I'm like, dang, this guy's good and just walk up to the three-point line and make an easy three. I'm like, damn. Like, and this is like at the time like, I just got my bucket list down. Like I want to play point guard for any kind of league. doesn't matter if it's like like really like terrible. I just want to do it. And then I figured I, this guy can teach me. Yeah, dude, how, how did you get started in the whole thing? Like how did you discover I'm, basketball? Was I mean, it's kind of funny. Um, the sport kind of just found me, um, and I actually started very late, meaning, you know, I didn't start playing an official park league basketball game until I was, you know, 14 years old um, in the middle of ninth grade. Wow. Yeah. So basically, you know, I was already into just, you know, school and I would play card games and, you know, um, but I had a neighbor and he, uh, he currently plays at Metro State, which is a... They went to the national championship this year for Division Two basketball in uh, Colorado. Wow. So, and every day he would just bug me, hey, do you want to play, do you want to play? And, you know, I would just, no, that's not what I do. Um, then one day I would just, you know, he bugging me so many times, you're going to say, all right, fine. Um, and I would just go back there and kick his butt. And it was funny because I really didn't play. I was just, you know, a year older than him. And, and uh, so, you know, it was kind of cool. Middle school, you're trying to learn how to fit in. Um, and I could see everyone was gravitating towards basketball. Mm -hmm. um, so I was just like, you know, maybe I'll, I'll start playing, you know. And, and at the time, um, I was a little taller. And it's just funny because, you know, I'm, I'm six foot now. But, you know, in, in eighth grade, I was, you know, already, you know, 5'8". So I thought I was going to be, you know, 6'5", <laughs> six, 6'6", five, six, six, you know. So anyway, um, basically what happened was, you know, I started playing just at school for fun. And uh, freshman year of high school is when I was like, all right, I'm gonna try out for the team. Um, and that didn't go too well, it didn't. I, I was cut. I was cut from just the freshman team, you know? And I was like, really? I was like, wow, you know? And, I, and it, the funny part is that it, it kind of hurt me, it kind of got to me. And that's why I was like, man, like, why is this bothering me so much? It's something I really wanna do, I guess. I really wanna prove these people wrong. I really wanna, you know, coach made a mistake. I know I can play. Um, and I had barely started playing, that was a thing. So I knew I had maybe some type of potential, but I had started so late. So, you know, when I had talked to a few coaches, the only thing that, that I knew was I'm gonna have to work extremely hard to catch up for all these years that I've missed. Yeah, I feel like I'm in that process. Like, I'm like, I'm 25 and I barely started playing. And a lot of my friends grew up playing. I was more like growing up skater and what, Tell me, like someone who is interested, like what would you say, like the like the bare bones to get started with? Like similarities that we might have, like um, I used to skate too when I was younger. I mean, I was active. I was an active kid, but I wasn't a basketball player. I played like soccer, you know. Yeah. But I, I was active. You know, you dance and, and yeah. you you can you used to skate, so you're active as well. So you know that dynamic already it will make the trans uh, the transition easier for you to uh -huh. play basketball. So um. Yeah, basically, you know, that whole summer uh, took a whole year of just working hard. And, you know, there's two things to it. There's, there's a mental aspect. There's a physical aspect, yeah. working extremely hard. And there's a mental aspect. 
you got to convince yourself and build that confidence, you know, in that all the work that you put in, you know, there there is going to be an end result to it, and yeah. you know, that's what I think a lot of it um, goes into. So when I'm trying to groom, you know, groom you into the the point guard that you want to be, <laughs> uh, I'm definitely trying to just build up your confidence, keep building your confidence, while at the same time, you know, keeping yourself driven. What would happen if you were cut again? Um. Well, I mean. When you cut, like you can look at the, the glass half empty or half full. Yeah. You know, um, there's not a day that any basketball player, look at Kobe Bryant, um, you know, he's a, he's a legend, but every day he's gonna tell you he's still continuing and trying to get better. So, you know, every day when you wake up, you know that there's some improvement that can be made. Yeah. So if you're getting cut, it's like, okay, maybe I'm just not the fit for your particular program. Yeah because um, everyone needs to get better and everyone needs to continue you know getting better yeah so when I well, when I was officially cut you know I just all right and I'm gonna turn it I'm gonna turn everything up this to this level and then come back and then see what happens yeah you know um, so you always want to turn the negative at initially it's negative you want to just turn it into positive when I met you you said you just had just come back from uh, competing in the internationally right uh, in, uh, yes. in the Philippines so yeah. they get to, what, what was that like Yes. Okay. So, I've had a long, um, you know, I'm I'm 22. I just turned 22, but you know, and I've only been playing basketball for about eight years. But I've already had a, a pretty, in my eyes, you know, a pretty successful career. But I'm gonna keep going. Um, like I said, I was cut as a freshman, came back as a sophomore, uh, made the team, just the sophomore team, nothing special, you know, just the sophomore team. But I was happy, you know, I was on the team, so I can prove, prove myself. Yeah. Um, continued working, you know, and then I was looking to make the jump from the sophomore team to the varsity team as my junior year. Wow. It didn't happen right away. The problem was, you know, there's other players who are more experienced. Yeah. Maybe you do have potential, but these guys are more experienced, you know, coaches, we need it done now. So it didn't even happen my junior year. I wasn't even a varsity player until, uh, until, until halfway through the season. Wow. So, at that point, you're already getting, you know, you're a junior, so you're trying to figure out, you're in high school, oh, college, what am I going to do? Yeah. So I could have already given up at that point. Yeah. I could have been like, you know what, I already have. One thing I always kept was I tried to keep my grades up high because yeah. I knew that you want as, mon as many uh, options as possible. You know, um, basketball, there's Division One, Two, II, Division Three as well. And a lot of people, they, they overlook Division Two and Division Three because it's not as, as glamorous as uh, Division One, yeah. So, um, but I just kept my grades up, and you know, I stuck with it, and I ended up, you know, making the team, and and as a senior, I ended up being the, the captain, and you know, had had those grades and had those options, and and I ended up traveling. Actually, um, I did a postgraduate year, which is almost like another year of high school, uh -huh. just for that extra experience. But I did that in the East Coast. There's actually a few schools in the East Coast that have this program um, and it allows you to just get more exposure, more experience. Oh wow. Yeah, so it's, it's a great, um, they have a couple in the West Coast, like maybe like the number one school in the nation uh, uh, prep school in Vegas. Oh wow. They allow you to do that. Um, so I went to the East Coast and, and I was looking at Ivy League schools, hopefully, you know, get, the, uh, get their interest and, and, you know, I'm out there so it makes it a little more accessible. Um, however, you know, you know, the injury bug came uh, to town. Dang. You know, so that's one you're in as an athlete or anything. The in injuries come and you yeah. have to deal with them. Yeah. And that's another thing. I broke my ankle um, after I had just left from living in Los Angeles in California all my life. I moved to New Hampshire for a year and now I have a broken ankle and it's snowing everywhere. Wow. So I'm like, all right, same thing. You can give up now. Yeah. You have grades, you can just go to school and just focus on that. And that's, there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, something in here was just like, yeah, definitely. I really want to play and I know I can play, especially at that level. I was on a team with literally 10 other Division I players. So wow. these are Division wow. I players. They're playing all over the country. They're going to nationally ranked schools. You know, um, some of them will probably be in the NBA in a year. You know? Wow. Um, so... When I, me going down was like, okay, coach is like, all right, well, I've got a bunch of other dudes, yeah. you know? So that was like 
basically like getting cut. Again, it was like that because in a mental aspect, it's just like, okay, so they're not really want, they don't want to really deal with you right now because they have other guys, which is a business aspect as well. Mm -hmm. But it's also like, what are you going to do? You know, you can still go back to school. You can come back from this and keep going. So that's what I chose to do. Um, I just chose to keep playing. I, I love to play. And, and that was when I was like, that's a big passion of mine. I'm already out here. I'm in New Hampshire. I'm 3,000 miles away from home already. Yeah. You know, I've decided that this is what I want to do. You know, and, and that's one thing, like doubt, self-doubt. Sometimes, you know, you're going to ask yourself, oh, dude, is this really worth it? You should, you should, you know. If you really want something, you got to go out there and get it. Yeah. Because, um, yeah, it's unfortunate, like, in the world we live in today, a lot of, like you said, a lot of uh, thoughts and every, it's so negative, yeah. you know. But you got to try to just stay positive and, and keep going. Um, so... After that year, um, which it's coincidentally, another another thing happened. I was slated to be going to an, an Ivy League school. Yeah. Um, then, I'm not even going to say the team, but they made a big run that year. They actually made history. They went into wow. the Sweet 16 uh, in the NCAA tournament. So out of all the teams, they were one of the top 16 teams. And that was the first time an Ivy League, you know, like, school had done it that that particular school had done it when it's been done in, in so long yeah so the coach gets an offer at another school wow so that kind of means my offer was gone huh. so i'm like all right what am i going to do i'm scrambling i find out my friend is going to a junior college in you know out here in moore park california so i'm like all right um maybe i can get in over there i never saw myself at a junior college first off you know especially when you graduate high school with a 3.7 gpa you wouldn't think that you'd be going to a junior college. But I was going into it, you know, to play basketball and go to, and go to school and get a good education as well. So I did that for a couple years and it was still difficult because I went there with my friend who was their number one recruit who played the same position as me, mm. you know? Uh, so I had to spend a lot of time on the bench when I Dang. felt that I should be in the game, uh -huh. you know? And that's another, you know, something I had to push through, push through, like, oh, the coach, I don't know why, he has zero confidence in me, but I have all the confidence in the world in myself. Yeah. Yeah, he has 100% of confidence, and, and, you know, and it's, and it's over the twist of my best friend, so you still try to be positive and, and keep everything going, but that's when I really need to look at other options, because now I'm playing collegiately, but, you know, the higher up you go, the smaller the numbers get. Yeah. You know, um, only 3% of you know, uh, high school athletes get to play at the next level. Wow. You know, really, um, that's one, something I read years ago when I was trying to, <laughs> when I was in high school. So, you know, to be part of that is already, you know, something I'm thankful for. Um, and, you know, I kept hearing from my trainer um, back then that, you know, you're Filipino, uh, Mexican, you have an opportunity to play internationally. Your yeah. parents, you know, my mother is full, uh, pure Filipino. My father is, is pure Mexican. Yeah. You know, I turned out this way because, you know, it's just, <laughs> I was out in the sun a lot. But, um, <laughs> you know, I was active. And uh, so I, I started playing in adult league. There's a lot of Filipino adult leagues out here. Mm -hmm. And I played in it, you know, just to, just to get out there and just play. Um, I ended up being like one of the top three players in the league. And um, it was funny, I was actually contacted by an agency in the Philippines. Like, hey, you want to play out here? There's wow. universities out here. And I was like, wow, that's, you know, and at the time I was still at the junior college going through, you know, trying to figure out what's going on. It was unstable mm -hmm. ground. Um, but when th this opportunity came up, hey, you want to come to the Philippines and uh, play out here in a whole different world, you know? Yeah. Never, I never was had visited the Philippines in the past. So, um, to me, it was like, wow, what a great opportunity. At the same time, wow, what a scary opportunity. Yeah. You know, uh, you don't know what's going to happen. I've never been out there. You know, I keep hearing you're young, you got to travel. And, you know, my goal was already to play overseas. So I'm like, wow, I got to do this. So yeah. I get a phone call and it's a couple Facebook messages, a couple messages back and forth. And three weeks later, I'm, uh, I'm on a plane going to Manila. Thank you. Yeah, it happens that fast. So that was last year. I get out there and I played well and, and um, you know, experience the world. You get to travel to different countries all through Southeast Asia, 
you have to meet, you know, you, you basically, you're living in another world and, um, you know, anytime you get the opportunity to travel, it's a, it's an, especially outside of the States, it's an opportunity to, you know, um, experience growth in, 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 a, in a different light, you know? Yeah. Um, so to me, I definitely took that. You know. yeah, what was it like trying to adjust and two, what did you find most like your biggest struggle on trying to adjust? Okay. Yeah. Um, well, first off, it's a you, you got to be mentally tough anytime any you know if you want to be successful and I would just say in life you got to be mentally tough and that doesn't mean you know walking around saying you know I'll do whatever you know <laughs> having a bad attitude or anything like that it just means you got to make smart decisions you got to be aware constantly you know um, you have to be ready to get out of your comfort zone at times yeah and you know <laughs> I don't know if there's any other way to get out of your comfort zone I mean that was a a prime example, yeah. you know. Um, they, there's some English speaking out there, and, and school it's in it's in English, um, but per, you know, I'm still everywhere I go, yeah. I stick out. It was a lot of little adjustments, I would say. Yeah. Just you know the time difference, 16 hour difference. Um, you know uh, the weather; it's very humid, and, and there's a lot of mosquitoes. You just gotta adjust to it. Um, you know, uh, everywhere you go, you're gonna get looked at. Yeah. yeah, out there, basketball is is the number one sport. Mm -hmm. Basketball is is very very important. And I was playing in the the UAP, which is you know the top eight teams in the whole basically in the whole country. And they have like ninety million people there. So everywhere you go, ah. people are looking at you. And if they do find out, um, oh you play for University of the East or oh wow like they want to take pictures and so you gotta just make that adjustment. Um, I had to get like a Twitter account and all this stuff. Wow, really? Um, yeah, just, you know, so it's like, wow, like really, this is, this is serious out here. Um, but you just, when you go into a new culture, you wanna, you're gonna have to blend into, you know, you're gonna have to take their ways, maybe the American way, you know, how people perceive that. You're gonna yeah. have to, you know, adapt and, and adapt in, into their views, Yeah. you know? Um, so that's something I had to do. Uh, you know, so, and pr oh yeah, the first day of practice, I didn't know what was going on. You know, mm -hmm. I hear I'm just hearing a bunch of Tagalog, and I only speak a little bit. You know, I, at the time I spoke I spoke zero, um, so I'm just, you know, just trying to play basketball. But you got plays and everything is going on. So and you're by yourself. Yeah. So a lot is going on, um, but at the same time, like I said, I, I looked at it as wow, this is how I'm gonna grow. You know, I was out there for six months, and like I said, I'm looking to go back out there. But some people might look at, oh, you're only out there for six months. Yeah. But to me, you know, every single day was like, all right, today you have to prove yourself. And so six months seems like a long, a longer time, you know. Yeah. And uh, you, you grow faster. You know? What do you think was the most, like, I think, most difficult uh, challenge for you to face? You can't fold under pressure. Yeah. Um, you know, I in high school dude, there's a pressure that you need to, you need to make the right decisions. Um, you know, you started late and you're gonna hear people and, uh, you know, even in prep school and in college you what are you doing? You know, you can be you you're a smart kid, you can do something else. So you're gonna hear pressure and, and other people trying to sway you away from what you wanna do ultimately. Um, you know, and, and keep climbing. And then in the Philippines, there's an immense amount of pressure. Like I said, it's the number one sport. Um, and I was, you know, the Filipino American, the Philam from Los Angeles, the guard who's supposed to help transform this whole university. Oh, wow. So every day during practice, I, who's this guy watching you? You know, there's, oh, this is the manager of this. You know, who's this guy? Oh, this guy is the, you know. Wow. Um, so you have to perform. You have to perform, and I think out there is when I really took my game to the next level in terms of just shooting the ball and 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 taking care of the ball and just really just everything matters. If you said yourself that it's helped step up your game, what do you feel like? In what aspects do you think it helped you mature in that sense? Yeah. Okay. So um, it just helped me mature in, in that you know obviously everyone's trying to reach one goal, and you're brought in for a specific job. So, you know, like I said, I took it day by day. Mm -hmm. That was the main thing. You know, I didn't approach it as, oh yeah, you know, I need to keep 
every day I was just like, all right, today, this is what I, I got to tackle today. Yeah. You know, it's like you just tackle one day, tackle another day, and then eventually, like I said, it was only six months, but the amount of work and, and um, you really, like you said, you put a microscope as well on everything, and I want to make sure this is this works, this works. So when I'm playing, and I was already backing up a superstar player. Yeah. So, um, you know, I so I already knew I have to just I can't miss. I can't afford to miss. I gotta make right pass. And it, and if you know mistakes happen, you gotta be able to rebound fast. You always have to be aware, especially since you're in a new culture and you, if you flip out or anything like that, lose your composure. You know, it's not gonna look good at all. Um, so yeah, definitely. It sounds like it sounds like the transition from going from place to place was super uh, easy to you. Were your, were your parents like super supportive of you just pursuing basketball as like, as your career? Um, I mean, to be honest with you, my mother always just wanted me to go to school and just you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I, like I said, there's nothing wrong with that, and, and you know, I'm eventually, you know, I mean. I, I'm playing in the university, you know, in the Philippines. I'm playing, you know, at junior college. So I, I never really said education and pushed it aside. I just said that, you know, what I want to do. So I got to make sure I, I take care of both. Um, in terms of support, yeah, my mother always supported me, you know, um, as much as she could. Um, and uh, it's it's difficult though because when you're really, when you really want to be successful at something, and you really have to dedicate a lot of time, and you have to make a lot of sacrifices. Yeah. Um, you know, so I can't even count. There's a lot of events, maybe family events, that that I had to miss because, you know, I, oh, I can't be there because I'm in the Philippines. I can't be there. I'm in New Hampshire. I can't be there. I have this tournament. I have this obligation, and and you have to find that find that balance. Uh, but it, it is difficult. You're gonna make a lot of sacrifices. There's a lot of times I, I actually I was accepted to you know certain school, Pepperdine University, UC Irvine, you know. Um, Pretty, pretty decent schools. Um, uh, they wouldn't offer me a full, a uh, full basketball scholarship. Mm. So that kind of <laughs> level yeah. things, you know, you come to that crossroad again. Uh oh. Um, so, but I always knew, like, wow, there's another avenue in my life I could go. But then at the same time, I was like, I didn't want to be, I don't want to be looking back ten years from now and saying, like, man, what would have happened if I really wouldn't just stuck with ball and just kept going? You know, yeah. I didn't want any doubt. You know, even if, you know, something doesn't work out at the end, as long as you know that you really did everything yeah. you could do, then I would I would actually define that as, as success, you know. Yeah. Did you ever have faced a moment where you just felt like giving up, like that was, like, that felt bigger than, like, than just pushing through, like, damn, like, no, maybe I should just go. Like, yeah. Did you ever have that? Like, what was that like? I mean, it's difficult. You're, you're going to have a lot of moments where maybe you get laughed at. I'm not going to say yeah, I had, you know, I always played well. I mean, like I said, I was, you know, in high school, I was playing JV. I'm a junior. And there's other people that, you know, sophomore maybe is on varsity. And, you know, you, people looking at you like, ah, oh, like, you, you get laughed at maybe here and there. And um, when it gets tough, you just got to keep keep going. There was, there were many times where I was just like, man, what, should I really be doing this? You know, even, uh, like I said, in the Philippines as well, because I'm like, man, where am I right now, you know? Yeah. And I'm from Los Angeles, which, so I, I know there's a lot going on out here. And I'm just like, man, and I'm out here. You know, when it's different. It's like when I get on the court, it's like a transformation. It's just like, man, I'm, I'm home. So it doesn't matter if I'm, you know, where I am. If I'm on the court, I'm basically home, you know? Oh, um, nice. Yeah, so you got to just find a way. What were conversations with yourself like mm -hmm. through those tough times? Because it's like, dang, I'm like, this is bullshit. Like, oh, man, I should be here. I should be something else. Like, mm -hmm. What would you say to yourself in the tough times? Mm -hmm. Well, I would say, you know, just you got to have faith. You know, you got to make a leap of faith. You know, there's where you are now and where you want to go. And, and, and you can get there. Yeah. You know, but and you can't. There's no foolproof way oh yeah this 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 and for sure there's nothing that's gonna stop me you know you're gonna have to take a chance at yeah. some point if you want to go big um, 
so you know I did that and at the same time being out there I wasn't just the only person that that you know wasn't born in the Philippines they had a couple imports from Cameroon Sierra Leone uh, my roommate was a uh, uh, Phil Brit so he was Filipino and British wow. cool. and he does modeling out there so you know so different avenues opened up um it, you know it's and then it's cool, like, you'll meet people out there. I even, you know, I met Rondo out there, you know, and it's like, wow, I never thought that I was going to meet Rajon Rondo in the Philippines, you know? <laughs> so it's like, you'll meet people, and and uh, that's the thing about, you know, a lot of, uh, well, for me, that's the thing about basketball that I really enjoy, that, you know, people from different backgrounds, and, and you just come together and offer just, you know, one one purpose, mm -hmm. and then make, make something beautiful happen. It sounds like you're big on risks. <laughs> But extremely calculated too, because because these conversations with these places have been uh, like you're making sure that it's good, so mm -hmm. it's like very calculated risks, and you're also so it's calculated yet flexible. Yes. So so to speak. Guys, t tell me about the why is it important to be flexible? Yes. Well, all right. So you gotta calculate it, calculate out like, okay, if I'm going to a foreign place, you know, yeah, I'm leaving, I'm gonna be by myself. Of course, you gotta make sure that you know. It, basic you know safety and here and this and that um the flexibility part is you got to be willing you really got to be willing to adjust yeah if i went out there and would just no i'm i'm and stayed in my own bubble first off you're gonna you're gonna hurt yourself you're gonna limit yourself limit your growth and um you want to try to enjoy and soak it up because you know and nothing, it's not going to last forever. I know even basketball is going to have one day where it's an expiration day of me playing, you know. Yeah. And then maybe I'll transition to another, you know, coaching or, or something like that. But um, you just got to be flexible. And getting out of your comfort zone, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, to me, I, I look at it as, it's like I said, it's an opportunity for growth. And um, even if you don't, you don't really enjoy it, you know, you can still look back and be like, hey, I went through this. Yeah. You know, and that that's just more more power to you, you know? Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Off camera, you just said something you had, something good you wanted to share. Oh about. yeah, there's, I mean, there's another story going back to, to doubt and, um, you know, thinking, oh, what if I can't do this? Um, basically, you know, I've always been doubted. Like I said, I started late, Yeah. you know? Um, I'm not even that tall for, you know, out here, you got to do six, five, six, 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 seven, you know, seven footers. I'm, I'm six foot, yeah. you know? And also, uh, my age i'm 22 which is you know i'm still young but there's dudes in the nba that are 19 20 years old yeah so you know sometimes oh you're already old you're this and that you know um and in the philippines it was like oh you know so much pressure and, and oh, are you sure you want to do this are you sure you can you don't speak to Tagalog? you know um but if, if we always listen to doubt there'd be you know where we wouldn't get anywhere i i there was the player i backed up um, his name is Roy Sumo. He's a great player. This guy was the toughest guy on the court. Fearless, attacks the rim, um, fast. You know, he was just a, a, a gamer. We call them gamers. Gamers are, you know, maybe you guys are shooting around and they're not making every shot or, you know, um, they're not the strongest maybe. Um, but when it comes time to play, they really compete. You know, so that's one thing. You maybe you aren't the strongest, maybe you aren't the best, maybe you're not the tallest, but when it comes time to it, let's, let's compete and just give it your all. So this guy, he is fearless. You know, um, long story short, he's one of the top players in the UAP, which is the, the the top conference in the Philippines. And this guy is five eight, five foot eight. It's like my brother's height. You know, <laughs> five foot eight, attacking the basket like he's LeBron James. You know. Dang. You know, and when I was seeing that and watching, you know, like wow, like this guy is five. And then my, my trainer, um, before me, he's five, he's five seven, and he played for Canadian national team and Pepperdine University. And this guy's a lights out shooter. So, you know, I'm like, if you always believe the the doubt, you know, it, it takes away from what what glory can actually come, and and it can come. Yeah. You know, there, it's all shapes, all sizes. You just gotta. I really think that believing. And confidence, and, 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 and that's the key, you know. Um, like so, with you too. That's why we're gonna pound, get you working. Yeah. Um, you know, training, 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 and then you're gonna, you know, get this this your growth curve is just gonna skyrocket, um, and it's gonna stem from. And you're gonna be like, and then when you play, you're gonna be like, well, I'm confident because 
this guy probably didn't even work out as hard as I worked out, you know. Yeah. And uh, you know, so that's that's another thing I like about sports and, and anything like even just competing, competing. And that's what I really love. I mean, a lot of times back to the doubt again. It's like Des, why why don't you just stay here, go to school, play in an adult league? Um, to me, that that that's cool, but I I, I love that thrill of that highest level playing yeah. at the highest level everything matters every possession matters you know so you know i'm sure you as a dancing instructor and coach you you like you know like and you you every every move matters yeah and, and, and you love that and um you know that's what I, I i feel like i can't this is my calling i can't leave just yet i gotta yeah. keep going you know and um you shouldn't give up because someone else wants you to or to compromise for what everyone else thinks you know um Whenever you make a decision, you should really make it, make it for yourself. Because at the end of the day, you know, when you look back, you're gonna, you're, you're, no one else is gonna be to blame. Yeah, you know? definitely true. Like one, of, one of the things is like you are with you 24/7. Mm -hmm. So, and at, at the end of the day, like whatever decisions we all make, and we really look at this, ourselves in the mirror and be happy with that decision. Mm -hmm. So that's a, that's huge on, on that, especially um, being doing what you're doing is just. just traveling and just really going all out. I feel like you're going all out. <laughs> it, it, just to pursue your passion. Because a lot of people, I, I think, not, I'm gonna say a lot of people, that are just afraid mm -hmm. uh, to take that risk. To, because they're comfortable. Mm -hmm. they, they don't wanna, because there's a, there's a set path that many people do, and it seems like it's guaranteed success. Mm -hmm. Or so, so it seems. And then you're, what you're doing is that you're just going all out making sure you're in a proper situation but in a situation where it's still supporting what you really want mm -hmm. right so that that's good and specifically to go to like uh the ones in new hampshire you said mm -hmm. and and the philippines like what kind of doubt like doubt did you feel from them or heard them say mm -hmm. what kind of doubt well like i said it's competition you know you're brought that out there you're on a team but at the same time there's other people on the team too and, and you know there's only only five people can play on the floor at once. Yeah. You've got a 12-man roster. So, you know, you're competing. Every day is a, is a new audition, a new tryout. You know, you don't want to get too lost in that, though. You don't want to get too lost where where you're just in there and you're, you're not enjoying time with those people because mm -hmm. you're going to be around those people a lot. Yeah. You know, so you got to, you know, chemistry is huge as well. Um, you know, and... and so even in the Philippines, you know, I'm a I'm an outsider or whatever, you know, Phil Am, and uh, you gotta learn to adjust, you know, with your teammates. Um, they're gonna give you extra out there, you know. I'm getting a little extra elbow and this and that. Oh, you're from the states, you should be able to handle it, you know. Um, <laughs> and instead of losing your cool, you gotta, like I said, you gotta just figure out, figure out how to maneuver, how to make it work, you know. So, I mean, everyone is going towards one position, um, and everyone is trying to get somewhere. And, and at times it is hard, and at times, you know, you will have conflict. Um, but you you gotta really, if you want to be successful, figure out how to make, how to get that all to gel together. You know. So out there, yeah, like in New Hampshire, there's ten other Division One players, and, and I'm like, I gotta make find my way in, find your way in, do what you do, um, in a, in a positive way. You know, because negativity is is not gonna help any situation you know um there's constructive criticism and that's fine yeah you know um that's positive you know that that's that's positive influence in the form of like you know yeah it's it's, it's what's building your guilt yeah it's like tearing it down yeah but um you know and i'm not saying like every day you can bring an intensity intensity is different from it's not negativity you know yeah. that's one thing i, I was a, i'm an intense player and i'm competing you know and sometimes yeah i will you know hey you know, D up, you know, you yell at your, your teammate or just out of, you know, your intensity, you really want to win. Intensity is, is important, you know. Um, if you, and like, like with the workouts, we do like a 20 minute workout, but if the intensity is so high that it, it's actually, you know, greater than being at the gym for two hours, yeah. slowly lifting, rest two minutes, slowly lifting, rest two minutes, you know. Yeah. Um, so it all comes off efficiency. I, you know, I feel like that being in the Philippines and, and all this is going on and having to really focus, um, 
gave my efficiency rating went, went, you know, skyrocketing. And I noticed that when I came back out here, that you know I was way more efficient. And just it was like, oh wow, like, wow. you know. What like I think is your driving belief every single day, like whatever situation, whatever the situation is, what's it, what drives you forward? Like what that, that one saying that God, whatever it is, what is it? Mm. Um, for me, I just really started living by, by counting your blessings. Mm -hmm. You know, like I said, uh, I've seen a lot since I've got to travel, and I'm thankful for that. And um, you see a lot of negative, you see, you know, positive as well. But, but you just thankful to be in the position you're in. Like I said, you know, you're living. You know, there's, <laughs> yeah. you're living. You know, so you gotta just be thankful for that, and and really. You know, sometimes in, in the world we live in, in, in the States and in, in the world we live in, everything's moving so fast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so with the whole, you know, we started doing the meditation. Yeah. It, it really helps. You just, sometimes you gotta look back, look around, you know. Everyone's going through things. Everyone is going through things. And so, you know, with the basketball, with basketball, I was just like, you know what, I'm just thankful to be playing basketball, you know. So every day I'm just like, man, you wanna be the best that you can be because this is an opportunity. You know, and um, you know, so many people. When you go to the game, like in the Philippines, like there's twenty thousand people watching you. You know, they're watching you. You know, they they want they're there to support you, and they they love what you're doing. It's like, so when you wake up every day, you're like, man, like there's a whole bunch of people that that really count on me, and I count on myself, and this is what I want to do. So that's why not why not do it to the best of my ability. Sounds like a lot of pressure. How do you deal with pressure? You don't just don't let it get to you. I mean, it will at times. You know, it's it's we're all human. You know? Yeah, we're all human. I'm not gonna say no one makes mistakes. To deal with pressure, it's all mental. It's all mental. You know, you can you can make it. You know, I, I gotta make these last two free throws, and, and you can make yourself shake at the line, or you can go in there with composure. And, you know, I think that helps separate people as well. Um, you know, the good the good from great. Yeah. You know, if you want to be great, you got to find a way to not let pressure get to you. You know, I mean, and then like I said, what's pressure if, if we're just dancing, if we're just playing a sport? You know, pressure is like, you know, putting food on the table. And, and that that's like a different kind of pressure to me. Yeah. You know, so like I said, I just go back to the blessings. Like if you're given the opportunity to do something, then why, you know? Uh, yeah, hold back. Yeah, definitely. Like, how do you, I'd say, rediscover or encourage yourself to keep going? Like, what is it that pushes you forward? Yeah, um, knowing that the opportunity that I'm in that right now, that I have right now, it, 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 it's something that might not have existed, you know? Yeah. If I could have gave up, I could have gave up so many times. And, you know, when I was down here at the bottom of the ladder, even when I was climbing, you could, all right, I'm happy here. If you just, if I would have gave up, you know, who knows? I would never been able to see half of the world, travel yeah. Southeast Asia. Um, if I would have just, at junior college, said, you know what, forget it, I'm done. You know, um, I would have been able to go to the East Coast, maybe, you know. You never know what can happen, but um, just, just knowing that, you know, this opportunity is, is so seldom. So, like I said, I just try to take it, take, take advantage of it, and because um, you know, a lot of people would love to be in the position you're in as well, you know, and 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 just knowing that it's like, it's like having a gift and not using it. You yeah. Know? What, what's the point? What if there was one piece of advice mm -hmm. you, like, your current self would tell Des from high school or back then, like, the one piece of advice, what would it be? Just, just keep going. Don't, don't let people rattle you. You know, um, even though I had, you could have had even more success possibly. You know, if you didn't let, oh, don't let this person rattle you. Um, you know, I'll tell myself to keep my grades up. There were times where uh, at the junior college when, when my grades would would slip, and I was like, because I'm only here. There's no, you know, I, I felt like oh, I'm only here for basketball because my grade. I know I can. I know I'm a smart person, but you know, I let my grades slip. So I, w I would tell myself, you know, keep your grades up because, you know, I, even though I'm going the very unconventional route, yeah. um, I never 
would say like, oh, uh, forget education like that. Eventually, you know, I'm, you know, I'm hopefully get a degree overseas, and then when I come back here, I'm gonna be looking to go to school as well, um, and just stay focused. Um, but but if I were look to look back and really just say, um, don't add pressure on you to yourself. Huh. That's what I would tell myself. Really. Yeah. Don't add. There's no need for added pressure. Yeah. Go out there, and there's a lot of times when maybe you're so excited or you're so nervous, you add so much pressure on yourself, and it reflects in your performance yeah. in a negative way. Just relax and just enjoy the game. That's one thing I could definitely say I do now. Yeah. Then maybe a few years ago, I was so stressed out um, to play. It's like you're doing this for fun and, and, and love, and, and I know the higher you go, the more of a business it becomes. But you know, just. Enjoy. I find myself a lot of times, you know, I'm having success, but I'm also like really just going out there and just enjoying it and letting myself be free. You know. Uh, what are you doing now? Like, what, what's what's next? What's next for Des? What's next is uh, <laughs> we're rolling the dice again. No, um, <laughs> either uh, like I said, I'm, I'm Filipino and Mexican, so there's actually a, a league, a LNBP, which is a professional league in Mexico, um, that. I, we were looking into. Um, that'd be a whole another experience, you know, that'd be going into a new world again. Yeah. Um, I do speak fluent Spanish, so, you know, that'd be no that's un problema. Yeah. Well. Um, but uh, there's also going back to the Philippines, you know, because I was there for six months and, and yeah, I, I left a little bit of a mark and, you know, I experienced it. Um, but, you know, I, I still, I can still see myself going back to play there, you know. Yeah. Um, there's the PBA, which which is like the NBA, but of the Philippines. So that's where, you know, it's a pretty respected league as well. And um, you know, I, that's one of my goals is to, to make the PBA. Um, but you know, I can either go back to the Philippines. We have a few other universities that are interested in me. Um, I can finish out my collegiate career. Um, I can, you know forego it and, and attempt to play in the, the Asian Basketball League, um, ABL, out there, which is uh, Southeast Asia, six teams uh, professionally as well. So right now I'm at the cusp, you know, like I said, I'm 22, I'm at the cusp, and, and we're trying to make a, a big decision is going to be made, you know, um, professional, state collegiately, where in the world are you going, Yeah. Um, and I'm going to have to take another leap of faith and believe in myself wherever I go and uh, really just try to make the most of it. Again, like I said, nothing will result negatively. Even if for some reason everything went horribly wrong, when I come back, all the lessons I've learned leading up to this point, it's going to translate. I'll, I'll just take it all and translate it to the next part of my life. If someone were to say basketball, it's, it's done. Your leg is broken. Yeah. You know, you can't play anymore. You know, um, it would hurt, <laughs> uh, but I would have to literally take it. Just everything I learned, the discipline, the um, dedication, um, and sacrifice, and, and enjoying what you do, and, and, and just translate that to the next chapter of my life. And you know, eventually, there's going to be a day, like I said, we're not going to be able to play anymore, or, or you know, I get older, and, yeah. you know, but um, just just stuff like that is, is stuff that just you, you take with you throughout your whole life your whole journey you know I, I never knew my journey was going to take me to the Philippines yeah I never you know so you know you, you got to go with it and, and believe and just uh, I, I gotta ask um, is NBA anywhere near your mind at all um, I mean to be completely honest the NBA is so uh, it's very interesting because like I said there's 19 year olds in the NBA yeah look at Kawhi Leonard this guy is in, in playing for the Spurs, he's 21 years old, you know, hitting big shots and, and yeah. you know, playing in the finals. Um, so there's pro prodigies, you know. They're, they're in the NBA at such an early age. Kyrie Irving is already, you know, a, a superstar and so young. Um, so that's the thing about the NBA that, that to me, is, is very interesting. There's also, like, a 34-year-old rookie, you know. Uh -huh. So you never know what can happen. Um, you know, there, there's NBA Development League as well, and and uh, but to me, you know, basketball is a global sport. You know, um, of course, you would love to play in, in the NBA. It's, the, it's very glamorous. It's the dream. Um, you know, but 
you know, it's a global sport. Basketball is a global sport. And, and for me right now, I feel like, wow, being able to travel all around the world at the same time, and as well as playing basketball, is like a gift right there. Ah, uh, um, yeah, 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 yeah. You know? Um, so if it comes across, you know, I'll be so thankful and, and, and you know, we'll, we'll find out. But even if it doesn't come across, you know, I'm not going to look back and be like, it wasn't worth it. Ah you know. uh, yeah yeah. 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 Right, well, uh, how can how can people connect with you? Like where can they find you online or whatnot? Oh yeah, um, you know Desmond Barristain. Um, Twitter is uh, at Desmond Anthony, and uh, you can even Instagram um, at D A B E R I S T A I N D A Barristain. Um, you know those three: uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. That's the best way. Um, or hit up M. Roy and he'll find a way to get in contact <laughs> with me. But yeah, um, yeah. yeah definitely. Uh, and also, uh, make uh, all the links, everything he just said is going to be on the show notes. And they're going to be linked down below so you can find them easily. So, uh, yeah, one last question. What's your definition of greatness? It's in your approach. Approaching each day, each, pro each project with a certain focus um, that allows you to achieve your goal as well as embrace the gift and and the struggle as well. So I would say that 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 would be defined as greatness. What did you find most difficult in terms of this being there for the first time ever? But you have this opportunity, but what was it like trying to adjust? What yeah. did you find like what did you find that one one what did, what was it like trying to adjust and two what did you find most like uh like I say your most your biggest struggle in trying to do this. Okay, yeah. Um, well, first off, it's a, you, you gotta be mentally tough. Anytime, any, you know, if you wanna be successful, and I would just say in life, you gotta be mentally tough. And that doesn't mean, you know, walking around saying, you know, I'll do whatever, you know, having a bad attitude or anything like that. It just means you gotta make smart decisions. You gotta be aware constantly, you know. Um, you have to be ready to get out of your comfort zone at times. Yeah. And, you know, <laughs> I don't know if there's any other way to get out of your comfort zone. I mean, that was a, a prime example. Yeah. You know? um, they, there's some English speaking out there. In school, it's in, it's in English. Um, but, you know, I'm still, everywhere I go, yeah. I stick out. Uh, you know, I don't know why. I don't know why in the Philippines, I <laughs> walking around, I just don't blend in with everyone. Filipino, but I don't think um, we can tell. Yeah, I, 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 maybe because I have a couple tattoos, you know, but I don't know. Um, but yeah, so the biggest adjustment was definitely man, it, was, it, was, it was a lot of adjustments. It was a lot of little adjustments, I would say. Yeah. Just you know the time difference, sixteen hour difference. Um, you know uh, the weather; it's very humid, and, and there's a lot of mosquitoes. You just gotta adjust to it. Um, you know, uh, everywhere you go, you're gonna get looked at. Yeah, out there, basketball is is the number one sport. Mm -hmm. Basketball is, is very very important. And I was playing in the the UAAP, which is you know the top eight teams in the whole basically in the whole country. Um, they have like 90 million people there, so everywhere you go, wow. people are looking at you. And if they do find out, uh, oh, you play for University of the East, or oh wow, like they want to take pictures, and so you gotta just make that adjustment. Um, I had to get like a Twitter account and all this stuff. Wow, really? Um, yeah, just, you know, so it's like, wow, like really, this is, this is serious out here. Um, but you just, when you go into a new culture, you want to, you're going to have to blend into, you know, you're going to have to take their ways, maybe the American way, you know, people perceive that. You're going to have to, you know, adapt and, and adapt in, into their views, yeah. you know. Um, so that's something I had to do, uh, you know, so, and pr oh yeah, the first day of practice, I didn't know what was going on, you know, I hear, I'm just hearing a bunch of Tagalog, and I only speak a little bit, you know, I, at the time I spoke, I spoke zero, um, so I'm just, you know, just trying to play basketball, but.